This video is for digital society students who are enrolled in the International Baccalaureate program and you're preparing for your external exams. Uh, this video is talking about content. Now in digital society, there's three C's, content, context, and concepts. So this video here is focusing on the content. So as uh, in the digital society guide, you're supposed to cover all three of those, the three C's over the two year program. Now, with a focus on the content, so first of all, uh, I've just shared this guide here. I've just got this website here that I've created, ibdigitalsociety.com. On the front page, there's some blog posts, and I've been putting some blog posts on now, basically thinking, if I'm, I'm, from the context, if I was a student about to do the uh, exams, the external exa exa assessment tasks, this is how I would be preparing. So how would I prepare for the exams? to have a good knowledge of content. So I've just shared this uh, blog post here and I created it yesterday and I've already got 13 views and I've got two love hearts. That makes me feel very special. Anyway, if you click on this, so I'm gonna start with, with the content, um, why, do you need to under, why do you need to study the content? Basically, if you look at all the assessment criteria from the internal and ex external assessment tasks, they talk about having relevant and accurate knowledge. So the content basically is, is loading up your brain basically with tech, digital technology terminology and so that you can use this correct terminology in the examination. Now, if you look at uh, your internal assessment, you need to actually reference uh, content. There's this part in Criterion A, uh, Criterion A or B, uh, I think it's, yeah, Criterion A, where you need to connect your internal assessment and make clear links to the content. So you'll need you'll need knowledge of content for that as well. Uh, now, if, if you look at all the group three subjects, if you're a if you're getting on a seven grade, you basically need to have precise use of subject specific terminology. So basically, the content gives you this. It gives you subject specific terminology. Now, I'm going to teach you. Uh, how to actually prepare for this, or if this is my suggestion. So first of all, when you look at content, there are seven different areas, data, algorith algorithms, computers, and so on. So they're the main categories, but then if you look a bit closer, those different those seven categories are broken up into uh, more detail. Now I've listed those on this section here of the website. So if you look at data, data is the main category. But if you look at all the different subcategories, the sections that it's broken up to, and what you'll start to find is some key terms like DIKW or metadata. So these are all the things that you need to have knowledge of. So I'll just go back to the blog post. Whoops, where is it there? So what I've done down below, I've actually, with the help of artificial intelligence, I've asked AI to extract all the key terms, and I've listed all the key terms here. So if I was preparing for exams, I would be trying to understand every single one of these key terms before I do the exam. Now, here's how I would study for this, and this is what I'd suggest for my students. So first of all, how to, how to learn about the content. Step one, identify the key term. I've already done that, and I used perplexity, the AI tool perplexity, to extract all the key terms. Um, now, what I'm gonna do now do is identify one of the key terms and find a definition. Now, if I'm studying for that, so I'm using the example of data security, what I'd first start with is what do I understand data security to, to be? How can I explain or define data security? So just from the top of your head, start coming up with some kind of an answer. Then use some kind of an AI tool or whatever, where, or maybe the textbook and find out what is an actual definition of data security. So I found this definition of data security from perplexity. So I'll just demonstrate that. So data security, go to new perplexity and I can type in define that key term. And this is what perplexity suggests. So for me, I would then look at that and then I would compare that with my own answer, what, what I originally thought. Now this is a good learning uh, exercise because you're checking your prior knowledge, matching it with the definition and seeing if there's any mismatches. But then if there is a mismatch, 
How can I get that pr correct definition into my brain? So uh, what I'd be doing, I'd be copying or rewriting this in my own terms. And I've seen a lot of students, they prefer to actually do the handwriting because they're manipulating the text from the definition, creating their own text, their own version. And they're also exercising, practicing, building the muscles in their hands for the, for the, for the uh, rigorous exam schedules that are coming up. So rewriting answers in your own word is a fantastic way to, to remember definitions. Now, after you've got yourself a suitable definition like I did here, I've got some a shorter definition than the one that was just provided, which makes sense to me. Now, the next step is to, to find some kind of examples as well. Now, real life examples, real world examples is they love that phrase in digital society. But the thing with the real real life examples, it helps your memory as well. So I also looked for real life examples of businesses that deal with data security and McAfee was one that popped up. So with the help of AI tools, I found some examples of what McAfee, what kind of services they offer in relation to data security. So now I've got my definition and I've got a real life example. Now, a lot of my students are visual learners and I myself am a visual learner as well. So to try and enhance that memory, what I would then recommend is to find some images as well associated with that. So through the process of creating all of this, getting your own definition, finding an example, getting some pictures, you will start to remember this kind of thing. And then getting close to the exam, you've got your own kind of resource where you can study and prepare before you go into that exam room. Now, I've had some of my students build these kind of resources, and I'll just give you some examples. So first of all, oh, first of all, quizzes. So once this is a great way to test your knowledge. First of all, if you go to somewhere like quizlet.com, you'll find lots of quizzes that are already there. What are programming language? Why are programming languages important? So there's probably already some uh, quizlets out there about technology, uh, things like data security or whatever the topic might be. So you can just explore those on your own. Or what's even better if you've got enough time, create your own quizlet, put your key term there, and then on the other side, put your definition and an example. So you might your quizlet might be uh, define and provide an answers for, uh, sorry, define data security and provide some examples. So when you flip over, you can have your definition and some examples as well. So if you were to create the Quizlet, you're going to have a better memory of these different key terms. Another terrific tool is Quizzes. Now, there's already a few Quizzes style uh, uh, resources that people have made. And again, or again, you can make your own. Now, Quizzes is fantastic because it's got some AI tools. Basically, Quizzes, you could copy and paste this stuff and ask it to create some quiz questions for you. So again, you're involved in that creation part. So if you're creating your own quizzes, uh, you're finding the resource, then creating, you're gonna have a good memory of, uh, uh, it's gonna be a good way to remember all of these key terms. Now, another example of what some of my students did, see here, this, this uh, student here has created images to help with the memory, visual learners, and given some, some uh, uh, definitions of different kind of key terms. This is, this is within the category of content algorithms. So this is 3.2 algorithms, um, and it's in relation to algorithms and social media. So you can see my student has created this, just all about the key words. So that creation part is gonna help with your exam preparation. One other example of something my students have created is a website. So this is the 3.6 category, artificial intelligence. And you can see that, again, there's definitions. So this one here is types of AI. There's different types of AI with short definitions, but there's also some visuals to help with the memory. So here's about uh, machine learning. So you can get the idea. That's how I would be preparing um, in a class activity or even if I'm home studying on my own. So my challenge to you, find definitions for all of these key terms and some examples and a visual. And if you can do that, you'll be prepared for the exams with content in mind. Good luck in your examination.